West Ham have been heavily linked with Feyenoord manager Arna Slot. I'm going to tell you a little bit about him in this video and what I know about these links. They're good links, otherwise I wouldn't be doing a video. I'm not just doing it for clickbait. Well, look, hey, I'm not going to lie. I want some views on the video. But there are other things I could have done today. I actually had a completely different video lined up. But these are good links from... Well, it's, it's not like some small little website in the arse end of nowhere. They are big, proper journalists who have got links to the board who are running with this. The Times are running with this as well. And when, uh, how should we say it, sources close to the board have been approached for comment on this, it's not been denied. Uh, I, I think it's good. I, I like this. This is a good rumour. And because it's a good manager, I'm going to tell you all about this guy. I didn't know anything about him before two weeks ago because... Well, because we, we were, not only we were linked with him, it was more the case I did a video and I was asking, why aren't West Ham ever interested or linked with any of the up and coming coaches in Europe? Who are these people? I didn't know who any of the coaches were. And this guy's name came to the fore, basically. I should have known. We should have known. You, you possibly do know. I'm, if you don't, I'm going to tell you now. Feyenoord's manager. He was actually in the Conference League final last season. We always talk about Jose Mourinho and the Roma team winning it. They beat Feyenoord in the final. And then it started coming back to me. Yeah, of course they did. I, I remember that. And I think they might have beaten Marseille in the round before. I might have that wrong. What I definitely don't have wrong is they are top of the Dutch league, the Eredivisie, which I think that's cold. I've probably got that right. So what, you might think? So what? Well, that's a really big deal because anybody other than PSV or Ajax that's top of that league, and it looks like they're going to win it. They've just beaten, I say just, about, about a month ago, last month, they beat uh, Ajax 3-2, uh, I think it was. That's a big deal. Anyone other than those than PSV or Ajax winning this league is a really big deal. No one else gets the funding or has got the history uh, in the Dutch league that those two super clubs have. It's not the final order of never won the league. I think they've won it once in the last 25 years. It's a, it's a, it's a big deal if you're going to go and, and break up that, that, should we call it a duopoly of the, uh, of the two clubs at the top of PSV and Ajax. They seem to be doing it. It's not just a flash in the pan, by the way. This really isn't. So last season, uh, Slot got final orders, I said, to the final. They lost out to Jose Mourinho's Roma. No shame there. They're doing it again this season. Funny enough, they're actually facing Roma at the moment in the quarterfinals of the Europa League. So they're doing pretty damn well and they're still in it. There's only one goal in it. I, I might have this wrong. I think I possibly, by an order, one goal up. I might have that wrong. I said there's definitely only one goal in it, though. So, I mean, we're starting to see consistency in Europe over a couple of seasons and possibly winning that league. Now, this makes him a very, very viable candidate. Everybody's looking at this guy as one of the top up-and-coming coaches in Europe. As I said, as far as I can tell, he plays a 4-3, or a 4 2 3, one system. Let me get that right. Uh, you know, very attacking. A uh, lot of his players he's, he's brought through. I think they sold a lot, lot on after last season's run. He's brought a whole lot, load of others through. They're doing really well. Uh, you know, attacking fullbacks and all that lovely stuff. Uh, very, very good attacking football. Cerebral coach thinks a lot about it. Uh, very tactical. And he looks like he would be a good fit. Now, for some time, I have, I've worried that, that maybe... We just don't, we, there's no awareness. West Ham have no knowledge of the European game. And I, don't, I, think, I don't think that's unfounded. You've only got to look any time we get in a bit of a pickle. What do we do? We seem to revert back to those same types. It's the it's Sam Allardyce type. It's the David Moyes type. Even when David Moyes has been in trouble this season, then what have we been doing? We're looking at Rafa Benitez, who's really done nothing in the game for quite some time. Um, and because of that, it makes you think, you know, does anyone at the club have their eyes on on anyone that's, that's, that's on the continent and doing well? Well, that, that's why this is important. This has not been poo-poo. This has not been rubbish. I certainly, a lot of us this season have been talking about Will Still, who is obviously doing really, really well over in France. Uh, he's, I think he might actually just have got his coaching badges now, but he was actually operating without a coaching licence. But he's been doing very, very well this season. You certainly got the impression that whenever his name was brought up, there wasn't this kind of reaction from sources 
uh, at West Ham United, we're getting a very, very different reaction here now. And that makes me think that there might be something in it. Hey, they've covered themselves, right? A key source uh, told Garrett and Hugh today, uh, anything is possible, although our preferred option is to... Um, is that the manager, he talked about David Moyes, has a fantastic end of the season and sees out his contract. That is not a denial, but that's as close as you are going to get um, in terms of a good source from the board and something being, uh, well, pr pretty much pretty much breaking news. That it's, it's clear. Now, this obviously goes on the back of rumours that have started to come out in the past couple of days that David Moyes is going at the end of this season regardless of what happens. Now, maybe that's a conversation for another day, whether we think that's that's a good news or bad news in leaving. Uh, it's a conversation for another day, I guess, and whether it's healthy or not, that he knows there's been suspicions or suggestions, should I say, that now he knows the time's up, the game's up, he's going to go out of a bang. He's going to try and win, the, whatever. That, that would be absolutely fantastic. And maybe uh, some people put two and two together. Maybe they're getting four, maybe they're getting five. This might be the case. But maybe, just maybe, that the reason we um, we were so feisty and, and showed such uh, attacking intent and such uh, ferocious pressing against Arsenal was because David Moyes has, has thrown, thrown away the caution. He's thrown away the, uh, he's taken a handbrake off. Uh, maybe. We've also heard other stuff, which was what Paquetta said as we discussed that in the previous video. Who knows what the truth is, but what I do think is clear is the board are finally looking at other options, even if they're not 100% that they're going to get rid of David Moyes. Because that was the rumour. Regardless, irrespective of what David Moyes does this season, even if he keeps West Ham up and wins the Conference League, he's gone. They're parting ways. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. It's just a rumour, isn't it? Um, I, 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 would like, I would like to think so. Look, I'll, I'll speak about this. Uh, uh, other uh, other times. Well, I mean, what you certainly got here with still, uh, sorry, not with still, with slot, um, Arnie, Arnie slot, Arna slot at Feyenoord is you've got someone who's really happy to promote from the academy as well. He's clearly very, very good at his recruitment. He likes to rotate, rotates his team quite a lot. I think, actually, if I'm not much mistaken, he relies on, because he does, does only play one up front, but he relies on two strikers. So, he, and he rotates them. I think they might both have eight goals. Um, uh, that might be. That might. I, I might have that wrong. They've both got a similar amount of goals, and they've also got a, a quite a rampaging goal-scoring midfielder as well. Um, I'm roughly there. The numbers might be slightly out, but he, he certainly does uh, rotate. Seems to give him uh, an even a number of games as well. But in terms of promoting from the academy, this is really good. This is really fit with what we want to do because we've got this great crop of under 18s who are, who are going to go and play in the FA Youth Cup final. Against Arsenal at Arsenal, how do we work that one out? I mean, come on, give them, give them a day out, give them a neutral venue. Let's not give Arsenal all the advantage on this one. But anyway, we've got a really good crop of young players who obviously dismantled Southampton. What was it, six-one in the last round, and um, and that's really good. So I think it'd be really important for us to have a manager at the helm who values young players, who's going to give them a path to the first team. You, you certainly feel. Um, the Arna slot would do that, and I've, I've, had, I've probably spent probably spent forty five minutes having a look at his record, having a look, reading through things. He's, he's not he's not adverse to poaching a little a, a naughty player or two from someone else's um, sort of reserves or, or academy. I certainly he poached somebody from uh, from Ajax, who's the, who's the brother of somebody else that's also at Ajax. Anyway, it's there's there's a lot. I've had to absorb an awful lot of information. This is not meant to be an encyclopedic guide on him. I'm just giving you, as West Ham fans that might watch uh, Hammers Chat and not know anything about this guy, a bit of an overview. If, if you really want to go and find out more about him, there's far more um, encyclopedic and better indexed uh, ways of finding out about the guy than this particular video. But I just thought I'd have a look, and when I saw it, I thought, OK, this is... He was, he was linked with Tottenham very recently, actually. Uh, well, of course, because uh, Conte left. This is going to be interesting, because Tottenham are also rumoured to be interested in Vincent Company, and I do wonder if, if we get who they don't want, quite possibly, because given the choice, he's going to join Tottenham, really, isn't he? Uh, well, either would Company. They would, they would all pick Tottenham first. I, I get it. Much as they're our, our rivals and, and they might not be our favourite club in the world, you would understand it. Look at the stadium, look at the training ground, uh, look at the, the budget that they've got to spend. You would understand either one of those managers uh, choosing Tottenham over West Ham. I don't have a problem with that at all. But we're in there. We're, we're looking at them. And I think sometimes we have a, a, a tendency to undersell 
West Ham. West Ham are, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the 20 richest clubs in Europe. We've had a whopping great budget uh, in the last uh, last transfer. They've got a massive stadium. If we manage to stay in the Premier League and we can also qualify for Europe next year, it's very attractive to anyone. A West 60,000 seat uh, um, stadium, a big a, a big club. Look, are we Real Madrid? No, we're not. But actually, you start scratching below the surface of those super clubs, and I think West Ham are, are there. And you start looking at it, you start looking at the budget we've got. I think we've become attractive to some of the best young coaches in Europe. And I think for too long, we have restricted ourselves by only only shopping in a very, very small pool. Only looking at this insistence that somebody had to have managed in England, had to have Premier League experience. And, and you know, and we were restricted. And that's why when it came to the crunch, we end up looking at people like Chris Hewton. We end up looking at people like Rafa Benitez, you know. Uh, forget it. If we're going to do something, we're going to progress as a club. And that's apparently what we want to do. That was the whole reason to move to the new stadium. After all, then we've got to start embracing some of the best young talent out there. Not just, not just as players, not just as scouts, but in terms of the head coach. It's the only way forward that we're going to build anything as a club. So there you go. Uh, let me know your thoughts below. Um, we'll, we'll deal with the David Moyes stuff another time. Is it, is it great for us to be discussing this now? Well, OK, maybe, maybe not, possibly not, but it's out there. I've not made this story up. This is out there. This is a big, big story at the moment. So I thought I'd had a look. The, the club are not denying this either, which, again, makes it even more of a story. I don't think it distracts from the game against, um, against Ghent. Let's be fair. David Moyes has been under pressure since November now. An another, um, another bit of tittle-tattle through the media about his job. Um, is, is he under more pressure now than he was... Uh, before when people were saying Benitez had flown over and was in the stadium ready to take over. No, you know, it's the same old stuff. He'll carry on, he'll get on with his job um, and, and I don't think it'll impact it at all. But it is very interesting. Let me know what you think in the comments below.